In this video, we're going to learn how to quickly create an urban scale type of diagram using a 3D software in Photoshop. I'm using SketchUp, but any other 3D software should get the job done just fine. Look, every now and then, I see this type of diagram popping on my Instagram feed, Behance, or even Pinterest. And although it's really easy to do, it can be quite a handful type of diagram to have in your skill set to use as surroundings or context analysis. Now, I could have definitely gone one step further and enhanced a lot more, but that's not the goal. Sometimes time is short and you need to get it done. Now, later on, I'll show you where to get 3D models like this. So let's dive straight into the video and down below you can check the timestamps to see how the video is structured. And if this is your first time here on the channel, I'm Oliver and I talk about architectural representation and visualization. If this is something you like or are looking to improve, be sure to subscribe to not miss out on any new videos. Now let's take a look at the process. Okay, so for this video, we're going to start with the model ready to be exported. And for this video only, I grabbed a random place in the world. I used CAD Mapper to download this area in 3D. And the cool thing is that it comes in layers and it's all organized. It has a bunch of file formats and up to some size, it's completely free. Unfortunately, it has only major cities, if I'm not mistaken, but it's worth testing it out. So the only thing I did here was add some extra buildings, paint some parts just so I understood the area, but we are actually going to do this in Photoshop. Oh, and I added the trees, totally random, but I tried to create some clusters and lines so that they didn't look too random. Look, usually for diagrams, I like to go for parallel projection because it takes the perspective out of the equation. And a diagram is much useful that way. I also place the view in isometric, which allows me to add things in Photoshop or even Illustrator in isometric later on. But sometimes, uh, to be honest, that doesn't look good or show parts of the model that is not useful, like here focusing too much on the river. So you can either tilt the camera to find a new angle or ditch the parallel projection all along and go for perspective. But the trick to make it look like a diagram is to make it as flat as possible like change the lens to 200 millimeters or something like that, or if you're in degrees to one degree. Too much perspective just doesn't work well with diagrams, all right? Just trust me on this. Cool, now this is the scene that I'm gonna work on, but before exporting, we've got to change the view style. Any 3D software probably has this. We need a style that is lines only, like this one. I don't want any type of face shadows or fills, just the lines and a white background. Usually, if I want to have full control over the final result, I would export in a PDF to open in Illustrator, work on the line weights and line work there, and then go to Photoshop. But the goal of this diagram is to be as quick and efficient as possible. So let's just use a PNG and go straight to Photoshop. Here, under options, make it really big so that we get a high quality file. We can always downsize it later, but I've found that SketchUp's image export when it comes to line work isn't really crisp, so I suggest going for a large file. Okay, so baseline's done. Let me import this one into Photoshop first. The next step is exporting the shadows. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I could have gone way deeper into this image and one aspect that could have been improved was the shadows. I could have used a render engine to generate a clay render with beautiful soft shadows to really give depth to the model. But again, that's not the goal, let's be quick and efficient here. Hard shadows from a 3D software is plenty enough. In SketchUp, we can turn it on here and change the orientation. So do that on your 3D software of choice, but before exporting, make sure that you turn off all lines and fills so that we got only the shadow itself. And since we're using the entire viewport to create this diagram and not crapping anything out, we can export the shadows with the same scene and they will match perfectly when overlaid in Photoshop. I'm using the exact same settings here. Now this is a game changer because, well, we could have done one single image containing both information, the lines and the shadows, but the more flexibility you have, the more options you will have in terms of style and final result. So now that we have the first layers in place, we can create the fills. 
And look, I can't cover every step of the way, but I will say the most important things. Use masks to create these fills. It allows a lot more freedom to expand or contract the area. You can use the magic one and the baseline layer to create quick selections, but then my suggestion is to clean it up or adjust with the brush or even the polygonal lasso tool if needed. The layer blending options is a great alternative to keep the style clean and minimal but still add a bit of detail. Like the inner shadow here for example, it just subtly adds a bit of depth to the river. The cool thing about this type of diagram is the ability to highlight certain blocks, buildings or large areas. I'm gonna use an accent color here, but in just a moment I'll go looking for a better color palette. And since the colored layer is above the line layer, it needs to be on the multiply blend mode so that it blends in with the black pixels beneath it. Oh, and the shadow layer also needs to be in multiply blend mode so that it doesn't show the white and blends with everything below. Adobe Color is a really handy website to grab color schemes. I think I've already talked about this website before. Now, when I was looking at different options here, what actually drew my attention was this banner here for some reason. So I just clipped this image and brought it into Photoshop to create a color palette from it. But you could have picked any color palette to work with. And then since we're working with masks and a layer filled with the color, it's quite easy to just fill the layer with the new color. Now, listen to me, getting a color scheme to work with doesn't mean that you need to stick with it until the end and doesn't change at all. Sometimes changes are needed to fit in your work. For example, this river was way too saturated, so I simply hit Ctrl U to get the hue and saturation adjustment layer so that it allowed me to just brighten the color, thus achieving a result that I was initially thinking about. The hue was right, it was just the intensity that needed some change. So keep that in mind. And that also applies to the other colors. For instance, I'm going for a more yellowish color here on the highlight. And this is the way I like to build the fire structure. It makes a lot of sense to me and any changes in colors or areas are easily done that way. Even though we're now going through Illustrator to work on line weights, we can add some thicker strokes here. Roughly done, of course, but gets the job done. Let's say that one of the highlighted areas has your project or buildings that you're gonna work on. Adding a thicker stroke makes it pop up. Just use a simple hard round brush and hold shift to do that. And then if you want even more emphasis, we can also remove the color from the buildings. Use the baseline layer as a guide to create the selections. Another benefit of exporting the shadow separately is that we can edit it individually. For example, we could add a bit of color to the shadow. It gives a little bit more personality to the composition and it makes the shadows not too strong. I like the way that it looks here on these tall buildings, but then when it overlaps with the highlighted area, not so much. And since this layer is clipped below, we can paint the whole thing with color and then just use Ctrl U to test different results. But I think I'm going with black, just lowering the opacity. That looks pretty good. Now the diagram is pretty much ready. From now on, you can add more textures, play with brushes, and a lot more. Just remember to use the multiply blend mode with textures and either copy the mask or clip to the colored layer with the shortcut Ctrl G. This diagram is pretty useful when combined with callout boxes, which doesn't need to look like this, but this is just an example. There are a ton of options when it comes to callout boxes. The goal is to just add more information in written format. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this process. If you've got any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments down below. And just to let you know, we just launched a new course over the upstairs platform, Creating Better Plans. The last week's video explains it all, but you can also check the first link in the video description to know more about it. Now courses are in-depth lessons that help support this channel and allow me to keep working on these free tutorials. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to not miss any future content. See you in the next video.